Come on. It always takes a minute. But anyway, oh yeah, here we go. Sweet. Yay. So, the Matrix voice. Uh, welcome to MCU Monday. Today we have this sweet little guest. Uh, it, as you can tell, is running this sound detection example code, uh, which is pretty sweet. This is a, a device from Matrix, which is able to be loaded with all kinds of different voice assistants. So you can load Google Assistant on here, you can get it to work with Amazon Alexa, you can get it to work with wit.ai, which is one that I've never worked with, uh, you can get it to work with Mycroft, and presumably anything else that comes out, uh, the production line of the world, you can get it running on that too. Uh, so right now, this is attached to a Raspberry Pi because I've been going through this example uh, and I'm actually, I've pulled this page up on the Pi itself uh, but I've been going through this example by the Matrix team on Hackster that shows you how to get it set up on the built-in ESP32 um, and to my great su surprise I was actually able to get it working despite the fact that I am really not that good with code. I'm really not. Uh, but to go over quickly like what this is, right? You've got 18 uh, RGB LEDs in this array. You've got eight MEMS microphones around it. And of course, as I mentioned, you've got that ASP32 built in, plus it's got headers to connect to the Raspberry Pi. Now what this example does is it uses the Pi to flash uh, an application to the ESP32. So what I'm gonna, or ESP32. So what I'm gonna be doing uh, in this video is trying to see if it worked and this will work when it is disembodied, removed from the Pi, and plugged into power on its own. Um, another interesting thing for possibly a future video is that uh, in the examples folder there is also one that says it's an FFT example, which I assume means that it runs a fast Fourier, trans Fourier pardon, transform. <laughs> We've got to pronounce it uh, Frenchly, I guess, on the um, the sound waves and divides it up into its frequencies uh, and then gives you a display of their concentrations, like an equalizer display, basically, separating into bounds or bands of frequencies and then showing you which ones are strongest. Uh, that's my assumption. I haven't tested that, nor have I looked it up, uh, but I'm guessing that there's an example on here right now that does that. Uh, which is very exciting. So in order to get this running, basically I had to do some setup work on the Pi itself. Uh, obviously I needed a keyboard and mouse attached to the Pi. Uh, I needed to attach this to the Pi. And then I had to download a bunch of stuff and install it on my own PC. Uh, and I'm going to be sharing my own build notes because there were some errors that I ran into. Uh, I'm enough of, like, I'm still a Padawan but my per training has progressed far enough that I was able to sort of plow through all of the errors that I ran into. Um, and so I'll share a build log of what those were and how you can get past them if you want to try setting this up on your own. Because that is a godsend for me when other people post their uh, adventures and how to solve the problems. Uh, yeah, so there you may run into some issues, but they're solvable. And without being a complete Jedi, you can totally do it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, you set up the Pi, then you flash the stuff from your computer to the Pi over your network, um, and then you uh, just do the this absurdly simple command called make deploy, and then it just magically happens. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so in order to actually try and make this work without the Pi, I need to turn the whole assembly off. Uh, and, oh, that means I have to plug my keyboard back in. I made a, a Raspberry Pi shutdown button actually a while ago, uh, but I have it attached to a different machine, so I'll have to actually do it. To do it cleanly, I'll need to actually pull up the uh, terminal here. And do a little, little Unix magic. Uh, da -da 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 -da, pseudo shutdown. Oh, God. Zero. And zero means now! Okay, so as soon as this is off, uh, it's still going? I guess that's because it has power? Whoa! Alright, so the Pi is off, and this thing is still going, so that's indicator number one that it, it probably worked. That's so cool. 
it's alive. And I've got some cool like ambient blue lights coming in the back of this thing too, which is pretty cool. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna completely unplug this so that they're both off. Boop. Assuming that there's no shutdown procedure for the, the voice itself. Ooh, okay, cool. Oh wait, there's an extra stack of headers on here for some reason. Oh, it's a spacer, so it's not sitting right up against the pie. Cool. Well, uh, I can always put that back on, but good to know. Uh, and here's the back of the thing. Let me see if you can actually see that. Over here. Yeah, this is the weird, boring side of the office because uh, I've been working on the... Uh, well, let's get you some focus here. Yeah, because I've been working on the... Uh, on the computer monitor and keyboard and stuff, obviously. Uh, focus! Ooh, wait, do you get to see the other awkward parts of broadcasting now? Okay, here you are. Um, yeah, you got the ESP32 over here, you've got your Pi headers, you've got your Ring of 18 RGB LEDs over here, you've got your... Uh, na -na -na -na. Oh, yeah, your little microphones. Check them out! Do, do, do. I think they're these little gold guys with the holes in them because that usually signifies a microphone. Anyway, yeah, totally cool. Uh, let's get back to regular focus, huh? That was a brief and terrifying foray into manual focus. Yeah, so uh, now all that remains is to plug this into 5 volts directly and see if it still works. Let's give it a go. <laughs> awesome. Beep boop. So sweet. Now we have a little voice thingy. If you want to do, you can be like Iron Man, and I don't know if you'll actually be able to see this. Uh, let's just pretend that I'm Iron Man. This is really awkward. Let's just pretend that never happened. That never happened. Anyway, you can, if you want, you can be Iron Man. You can do the like whole Tony DiCola thing. Um, speaking of which, Tony has been doing some really cool stuff over Adafruit with CircuitPython. He's taken the Sinobit, which is that sweet microcontroller designed by Naomi Wu and created by Elicro. It's got a 12x12 LED matrix uh, designed so that it can display text in all kinds of different languages, uh, which is neat. Uh, and Tony has been working on all kinds of different uh, stuff to help get that pixel matrix up and running. Uh, so he's got the digital sand demo you might have seen, where the pixels kind of flow to the bottom of the board. Uh, that's super cool. He's also got some uh, other display stuff, and also like a, an Iron Man sort of, uh, what do you call it? Arc reactor thing going on. I already think of this thing as like my friend. I'm very quick to personify technology. But yeah, so that's the Matrix Creator voice. Wait, no, this is the Matrix voice. There is another one called the Matrix Creator, which is much larger and has more LEDs, and I want to get that one up and running too. Uh, that's for another show. Uh, another day, perhaps, also, we will try the Fast Fourier Transform on this guy. And in the meantime, I hope you uh, have enjoyed this. If you explore it, it was not too painful to get set up. Uh, and yeah, I hope that we'll be hearing more from these guys soon. Have a great rest of your Monday, and see us back again next week for MCU Monday. Have a great one. Ciao.